Okay, people. Um, I'm going to make an. It sounds like an excuse, really. It's not. I'm, this this mug has been far too busy of late, so I haven't been able to get a proper man in the van going. But I've caught up with this this Herbert. Um, about the time we got in him here because, well, I've known him quite a while. Known him since he was a little toe rag, like <laughs> that big. Uh, Christ, he even come and live with us for a while. Uh, Mr. Dylan Woodcock. Dylan, um, let's just dive straight in. Uh, good to see you, chap. Yeah, no, we've had a good day, haven't we? We have had a good day. So what, we, what we've what we been doing today is uh, we've been doing a Steelhawk training day, Supercross uh, training day, mm -hmm. obviously, for when we run our airborne gunner so thanks for coming out and doing that and oh, mate, it's been it's been awesome so to be fair like when we when you had the race i was a bit scared for some of the kids riding yeah most of them turned up today and rode the track and like, i was blown away how much they was jumping after just not even really much advice just a bit of oh you say that a confidence and stuff like that and obviously me just helping them out a little bit with confidence once one does it it's just like monkey see monkey do isn't it i gotta say i was obviously standing back knowing mm. you from being a kid and yeah. then seeing you now as an adult yeah. teaching them i had a, i didn't i wouldn't say i didn't well up i'm not gonna yeah. go that far with it yeah. but i had a little moment <laughs> i thought I saw, oh look there's there's dilbot teaching them and i remember when he was that kid and i have to say mate standing back and listen to you talk yeah like it's funny in it that you don't realize how much you learn as you go along and like you were talking to them i was thinking he does know his shit. He knows his stuff. <laughs> he absolutely does. I've been told from enough people. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think I've taken bits and bobs from everyone that I know. Oh. I've been told the same thing by everyone, but everyone tells it different. And yeah, and yeah I think it's been an amazing day. We had one, one little spill with one guy, but it was not. It's no one's fault really. It was a tough jump that he was doing. So, uh, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a mega day, especially for Steel Hawk and, and Judy and Paul and yeah. yourself coming out and putting this event on. It's, uh, it's great. You you know you started going to America real young. Yeah. You had well you, you didn't stay over there, did you? But you went there what at what age on the no, on the Cobra? So when I was young, I'd done the fifties. The who who used to run it? Who was it back in the day? The Supercross. What here in the UK? Yeah, who was John it? Uh, John Hallam? Wasn't it? That was it. That was yeah. it. He used to do it, and then there was like you used to win prizes. Like yeah. you'd win like vans, shoes, and yeah, all that type of stuff. And then the Cobra, I used like the, my dad was, my dad, you know, and then he's like, he always likes to be different. I mean, we rode TMs, we rode Kawasaki's, we rode, <laughs> and obviously Kawasaki and TM were not the main bike, like yeah. KTM, everyone rode a KTM or something like that. And I had a KTM, and it was when the power valves were snapping on the things. And he was like, oh, we're not going on that, you know, he's like, so we won the Cobra, won it. And they'd never give me the bike, there was being like nuisance, I was pestering, pestering, pestering. This is in the UK? It's in the UK, so I won the Supercross, won it, there was a kid called Jamie Clark, I used to race him all the time. He was on a Cobra, and I was on yeah. a KTM, and he lost, and I, and I beat him. And uh, we was pestering, and I want this Cobra, I want this Cobra, I'd never give it to us, and then uh, we got a call. Right, we're going to give you the Cobra. We was waiting on the new model. Do you want to come to Minios? And obviously my dad being my dad, he loves Supercross. He was like, yeah, we're coming. So we got Mustang and we've done all the thing and drove to Mini, got a flight to Orlando, went to Minios, met them. It was me, Ryder D. Francesco, Styles Robinson and um, Sexton. Well, all riding for all, Cobra. All, all riding for Cobra and I was the only Mate, foreign. that is some story. Yeah, and it? I was the only foreign guy, but like it was when Ryder had a really... Oh, he was a little chubster, wasn't chubster, he? Literally, yeah. like a little round face. Yeah, yeah, and then obviously Chase was and was knocking around, and like you obviously don't know what yeah. they're gonna get up to, and obviously yeah. they're doing their thing, and they're pros and right for big teams, and I'm just a hillbilly privateer that just loves a beer every now and then. What? Yeah. <laughs> but when you went out there, so what? What age? What year was that? It must have been 2011 or 12. I was young. I was on a 65, oh, so about. Right. 10. What an experience, though. So I went the first time experienced it and then i actually went back the second time and was my dad stayed in contact with chase's dad yeah and i rode chase's yamaha once uh su no small wheel yeah i rode chase's small wheel on my 65 so i rode two 85 classes but i never rode 85 so i just was there trying to get track time and my 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 bloody dad booked the flight for a day early and i won the first race come to the thing and my dad got an alert on his phone saying you've got to catch the flight so I would have won a championship no and then we had to fly home so um, obviously it wasn't that big deal because I no, didn't, I didn't, didn't know. know and then uh, years to come I found out but we was going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards made contacts I went with you that time yeah we, so we raced the Cowie and then yeah, then, so you come off the like the Cobra thing, didn't you? You know, and that's obviously that's when I first noticed you absolutely on the Cobra, and, and to, in in a way, what Lenny was saying was kind of cool because you did stand out straight away in the yeah. UK. Like, I don't know, this kid over there on a Cobra, I didn't even really. Yeah, you never realised we had yeah, him yeah. in the UK. No, no. 
And uh, so that's when I first noticed your skill set. Not, you know, obviously me and many others. I'm not taking credit for, you know, like finding Dylan Woodcock. Yeah, no. Because you, you had your natural skill set anyway. Yeah. But, you know, now looking back on where you are, did you did you reckon that that was just because you went and did that, that set new goal? If you hadn't gone to America and done the mini O's, you, I guess you wouldn't have seen what it was like to, to the Supercross and everything like that. Yeah, no, so but, that set you on your path. Yeah, really? when I done the mini house, like if you put like 2010, 2011 mini house, it's proper Supercross track. Like it's yeah. whoops, and it was proper. And then I remember the last year I'd done it, it wasn't so good. But like, is that right? So they changed it from when we went out there then. Yeah, it wasn't. It used right. to be built up. Like it used to be massive. It used to be really big. And then I obviously meet people and you get to know people. And then I kind of knew that's what I wanted to do you know i'm only yeah. really race supercross like if anyone sees me on a motocross track then no i'm not gonna really do any good like set the world alight you know what i mean like i got 20th on a 125 the other day if i was yeah. on a 250 i probably would have got 10th at best do you know what i mean yeah, I mean, but like, it's coming through youth i know it's youth motocross in the uk but you know you won you won motocross titles yeah i won motocross titles but i just i don't get the same enjoyment as pe some people do when they ride motocross in supercross like i, lo yeah. I love supercross like just then even spinning now it's been got a little deal going on yeah. with SR75 we're going to do some French races and stuff and I never rode a Suzuki yeah. never rode the bike and just straight away just kind of get used to it you do you go to these different countries Germany, Holland you jump on these bikes and uh, you get into it don't you but no like I said it's been a it's been a long a long journey like it's kind of been up down up down mm. down up up down and you <laughs> kind of get somewhere and you just kind of it's like a, everyone's got their own <laughs> roller coaster haven't oh, they oh weren't they and yeah. I, I just feel like now I'm on I'm on that flat path of roller coaster where i know what i got to do i know what it takes to do them levels and i feel like i can be a little bit better in america if i had a a bit more support you know like yeah. i'm not i'm thinking like you see me on the line i'm not going like that around the back wheel and checking i'm just making sure everything's tight because i'm doing it or like see people don't realize that already even though you've gone over there these last couple of years certainly this yeah certainly obviously since the injury and this year yeah probably thought yeah you know you've now picked up a decent ride and all yeah. that kind of stuff. no people people haven't seen it you're still absolutely still doing it yeah, so on the, your tour so the you? deal went a bit pear-shaped it was it was no no one's fault uh, abby from all south she had a family issue which if i had a family yeah. issue i'd have been going home I'd, if something happened yeah. in my family to some one of my relatives and it was that bad i would have yeah. gone home and uh she just went, she didn't go cold, she just told me straight up, and I, I'm, me being me, I'm going, I've not gone all the way around the world just to come yeah. home, I'm going to stay out there and tough it out, so I had to spend a bit of my own money, and she gave me the bike, she was kind enough to let me change the graphics, for like, yeah. help me out, like, people like Seven, United Grab, Duck Smart, and all those type of people, they all muddle in, because they like to see me do it, but like, it, it's a lot of stress, like, you've seen it, like, it is, it is, so even like, just from getting there, and, and Mickey, Mickey coming, and, and setting it all up, and it, that's a massive help, but it's still a lot of stress, like, even if you say, Dylan, don't worry about it, you're still going to worry about Plus, it, the, yeah, you know, you, you're kind of playing it down even more than I thought, because you are, you, it's not like you're going up the road and run it, you know, doing a club meeting. No, yeah. <laughs> is it? No, you're Come at on. AMA Supercross. You know, you are you are going there and you are racing arguably yeah. the the biggest and best off road dirt biking championship or whatever there is in the world. Yeah. You know, we know what we we all know what we know about NXGP and outdoor motocross, but let's not kid ourselves here. AMA Supercross is the the kind of pinnacle of like coverage and exposure yeah, and exactly. all that. I think so. There's a lot of press. There's Absolutely. a lot. There's a lot of press, and, I, and I'm not being funny. I, I, the way I look at it is, it's winter in England. It's nipple deep at any track. It's it's <laughs> it's horrible. And uh, if you love or hate me, you're still going to watch me do it because yeah. it's the only race on of the year. And yeah. then it's nice to get a lot of messages. Got a, little, a lot of following from it. Like my followings grow a lot. And. Uh, yeah, I like to. Think, I used to be a rat when I was a kid. I used to think I'm a nice guy now. Like I'm always hello to everyone. I've had my ups and downs with some people, mm. but yeah, I just feel like a, I feel like it's like I said, like the roller coaster is just going flat, and all I've got to do is just keep doing a little bit, a little bit, and it yeah. will just start climbing. You know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. A rat. I won't go. No, you want a rat. You want a rat. No, it's you, you were you were rough around the edges a little bit. You know, I would say. A little bit of a cheeky, lovable rogue, yeah. you know. But then, as, as every kid is, but you know, you you have to go through that. And I also think, you know, getting to know you like I have down the years. Obviously, you went and had that taste in America. Yeah. So I think that also opened your dad's eyes yeah, yeah. To, to what could be done. So your dad was, you know, like 
always like, I wouldn't say pushing you in a, in a negative way, but you know, obviously he could see what maybe what you couldn't. Yeah. And he, he was just trying to bring that out of you, wouldn't he? To, you know, because be he knew, because he knew, I think he did know that you have the skill set. Yeah, you could for do sure, it. For sure. It's, it's, it's a tough one because you're, my dad's just, my dad's busy at work, so when I'm young, it's not like he can just go, guys, no. I'm I'm gonna go for a few months. He, yeah. The only other time he's come to America is this year. We drove mm. to what he comes. He actually drove the vehicle, and I told him to get out because he's driving it like an absolute menace. I said, get out <laughs> the van, just sit in the passenger seat, and just I'll drive. I drove there, and I pretty much drove the whole way back. But like. It's so cool, and like we, me and my dad used to butt heads and all that type of stuff, and you kind of get past that. And like we went to Oakland. Well, because you're you're a bloke now. Yeah, yeah, no, that's just the thing. But we went to Oakland. We had an amazing time, and it's it's like that. It's, motocross is fun, and if you don't think it's fun, and you're just coming because your old man's telling you to go, you should tell your old man you don't want to go because it's it's not enjoyable, yeah. is it? Like I go riding now, I I enjoy it so much, and uh, and yeah, I just wanna I just wanna ride supercross and do fun stuff really <laughs> well that's it talking of fun stuff um you is, you are training aren't you or doing doing courses and stuff to, to do become a stunt man yeah no or i'm, I'm always doing that i'm always doing stunt stuff i'm always if i'm not doing this i'm doing that if i'm i'm always doing i'm always doing something i like to say i've always got my fingers in a few pies doing mm. doing odds and sods but yeah, the stuntman thing's not going to happen like that, otherwise everyone would yeah. be doing it. It's, it's a tough ladder to climb, and uh, I'm climbing it, and I know it's tough. It's hard. Like, I've been riding motocross since I was three years old, and I've only really just stopped doing it so much in the summer past two years. Yeah. I'm no fighter, no judo wrestler, and I've been going judo maybe... <laughs> 20, I've, mad, been, I've been maybe 20 times, and I get my ass kicked every time by the same guy, and it's... You have aches and pains, like I've got a collarbone, my shoulder's not very strong. So, this is all, the, these, these are all elements that you have to do to be a qualified... Yeah, you can't just nosy your way in, and especially someone like me. I'm, there's no way I'm going to nosy my way in with someone like Lenny as a dad. It's not, it's yeah. not going to happen. There's no yeah. way. You, you, some people do, or they do whatever they do, but you don't, I don't want to just settle and just be the... The boy that's there and just does yeah. Like... So just to shed some light on it, so Dylan's Dylan's dad Lenny is or is a stunt man, yeah. was a stunt man. He's now yeah. more coordinates. Now. Stunt coordinator. He still does a bit though, doesn't he? Actually, yeah. occasionally if he has to. Yeah, he can get involved if they've got an get involved. or something like that. Yeah, because <laughs> he's been all kind in kinds of films. There's all kinds of is you know he's in Star Wars. Wasn't oh, he yeah. in one of the? He wasn't yeah, he no. not an Ewok. He was an out. Was uh, he been an elf or no? Um, the not the it's, Skywalker. It's is it? funny anyway, isn't it? I don't when you know show me that picture of him it. when he was all in costume or whatever. Yeah, that that was that was funny. But no, I, I like to think I live quite a cool little life, and, and I keep the balance good, riding the supercross, keeping the work good, and then, and yeah, it's just a, it's just a, an evolving thing with the supercross. And I, yeah. I feel like I'm at a level now where I can go to a team and go, here are my results. I've got some half, half decent ones. For what I'm doing, yeah. like, I'm actually doing it on my own, and I'm not American. Yeah, I'm English. It's a time difference. I don't know no one here apart from Mickey and Megan, and they just had a baby this year, so they're they're busy. They don't need me as a big baby going, oh, can you come <laughs> help me do this? Like, they need to crack on and do what they're doing with their life, and I and I need to make my own path. But no, I like to think I'm at a level where I'm. If I come on a team, I think I would. I would level up you know there's no doubt about it mate i don't think it i we i think we all know that like i said to achieve what you've done and it's not blowing too much smoke up your ass but for you this year especially coming off the back of that injury last year which was worse than what and i know it was worse than what you let on to the general yeah. public you know yeah. you had that back injury at the end of what was it last year wasn't last it? last year yeah you know and that was touch and go for a while then yeah it? no you know? it was savage it was savage but I'm not going to whine and whine and say this no, and that. But, like, but what I'm saying is, you kept that on the low down. You didn't like, you know, and a lot of people didn't realise how bad that injury was. So then to come back as a privateer, have that whole thing kind of fall apart around you, mm. like you said, with the team, because of nobody's fault, you know, the, the woman that was owning the, t yeah, the family yeah. thing. Yeah. It was just circumstance. And then to come back and to do that yeah. and to qualify. Oh, you qualified for, for every... I qualified for four out. I don't... Five, five out of six, I yeah. think it was, and I, I, the only one I didn't make was when I had that problem with yeah. the um, with the fucking start button yeah. when it ripped off. But uh, yeah, it's difficult. But like, I think I've opened up people's eyes and shown them what it is like, because like you have these teams, Revo, and all these people that are going out there and pumping 
they got serious money to pump into someone like someone that's riding for them or their rider. Yeah. They've got they're gonna get results because yeah. there's there's a mechanic, there's a there's a rider, there's a team boss. Yeah, I'm all three of them in one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and doing all the rest. Do you know what I mean? So. I feel like taking a little bit of stress and not saying I'm moaning, saying, oh, I'm doing it. This no, and that, but, but like, if you take a little bit of stress off yourself, you have a little chill time, you can train a bit harder so you've got more time to relax. Mm. And I just think you, your mindset changes. Well, you're you? always thinking, aren't you? When we were out there, you was having to worry about then sorting out graphics because you had to change the graphics or you had to, you know, get some different but the bars and all that kind of... Oh, you were just... always on the go, weren't you? It was mad. It's a stressful type, but... Yeah. Uh, but like you say, you've done it and you've exposed it. So from what we've done today we've done this obviously training with the kids you know even kids on electric bikes and autos going back to what we said when you went to the mini o's would do you feel now like because you said you love supercross and whatever do you think that not i wouldn't say your career path would have changed any different but you you'd have enjoyed it more and felt that you'd have been more into it if there was a supercross scene for kids in oh, the man, uk for sure the, the first thing I got not a there. one-off event you yeah, know no. i'm on about a proper a oh proper... for sure for sure like things like today right there's no there's nowhere to practice there's nowhere to practice supercross unless you've got your own private track and the people yeah. that have got their own private tracks they don't want 40 50 kids going yeah. around the track because it's going to mash yeah. the track up and something like today where he's got a nice hard pack track it's not too righty you can do the jumps it's it's a nice track to come to and and to have a series where you can see kids blossom like there was no kids like we said earlier there was no kids jumping there was one little kid yeah. john little john slade he was jumping that double john slade jumped the double this morning and about all the other kids apart from the 250 kids followed him off it yeah. they've got a group of 10 kids and they're all jumping the jumps now they would have never ever done that if they had come to this race and just race not yeah. saying i've t no, taught them totally it's not. just because they've they've got no crowd there's no one there mum and dad there's yeah. me and you if they want to go try something they can just loop around yeah. and try it and i think supercross it's not a 10 minute fix is it you no you, you see these kids on the 60s and 50s the dads are just like throttle it you can't do that on, on, on this track. You've got to take your time. And that's what we said. So we're... for rider development across the board, yeah, you know, we we think, we, we didn't certainly think, but the, the, that's going to help develop a rider's skill set on the motocross track. For sure, well. for sure. And, and I think the more the more we do things like this leading up, like before races, if we have little little days where you can come and have a few pointers and ride the track for, for this yeah. rate, I think it's only going to help people yeah. bring confidence and go, whoa, that little that little goal, little John might be good at Supercross. Let's go on that route, or or let's do this route. You're never gonna know because we don't. England with the motocross scene is is that big. It, but it, but we're still just so isolated on motocross, and like I said, the sport's changing. The electric bike movement that might edge towards more tracks like Supercross tracks in oh, town centres oh, and things like that. I can tell you won't for it? sure. Yeah. Do you know, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? No, no. So well, I just come back from the start test, and I can tell you for sure. Once that bike gets cooking. I, I think uh, the sky's yeah. the limit with with that bike. Not just coming to cusses and doing the, the doing the track, and you can make as much noise as you want on yeah. this electric bike because it doesn't make no noise. Yeah, yeah. The only people that are going to make noise is me and you going, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. someone getting hairy in the whoops. That's all you're going to hear. But yeah. like, it's gonna. It's true though. It's like you're gonna. Yeah. You can take it to to football stadiums. You can take it to streets. Yeah. You can import dirt and so so. Supercross style of racing is going to become more of a thing to elevate our sport in oh, it. Mate, Either way you look at it. Mate, it whatever way you, you look at Supercross and you go, it's dangerous, this, this and that. It's, it's like that Supercross track there. You can see every element of that track there. And if you follow the rider, you can follow him for a lap. You can't follow a rider around that track there on the motocross yeah. track for a lap. You not, can't see the ruts all the way over in yeah. that corner or, or in that corner. And their dad's just shouting and doing whatever they're doing. You can't um you can't see what's going on and yeah. you can see everything there. It's an it's an it's an action packed show, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you've done Arena Cross, I've raced it enough times, it's it's a show and it brings people out. You can bring your wife and kids to this event. Mm. You can't bring your wife and kids to a dusty motocross field. Yeah. It's true though, right? It's true, it's right? True. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, so for us it's been a good it's been a good day doing it. Mm. Um really appreciate you coming out and doing it so what's the obviously you just i know you can't talk about it too much but you just touched that you're going to be potentially doing some stuff yeah. uh, with sr 75 yeah, yeah. plans for supercross next year i know it's still early days but you oh, i'm, a, I'm you, a free agent for the american supercross so if you, somebody sign him up yeah 
and uh we're, we're... he's worth a punt for sure <laughs> and um uh, just trying to just make contacts with the world supercross and oh yeah and, there's and, that too yeah, yeah yeah but it's all it's all ndas and, yeah. and all stuff like that you know so it's, it's hard to uh it's hard to reach out to people but i spoke to a few people and mm, people got balls rolling here and there so hopefully we can at least race the british one yeah at, at least but uh yeah, I mean, I, was, I mean, how cool is that? Travel around the world, not, yeah. like not just me go to America. I'm traveling to Indonesia, and Australia, and going yeah. to race Supercross because I'm a realist. I know this. This. So, see, this is what we're saying. So the electric bike thing, you know, moving forward, yeah. more chance of events being t staged in town in the UK and all that kind of stuff. The World Supercross Tour now in the UK. And we're not, you know, it's almost like we're doing an advertorial here, but it is that it is what it is. I think now, about... now is a good time, the right time to start trying to build a supercross scene in the UK and get kids into it. I mean, for sure. I think today's turned a lot of heads to a lot of people, um, with them with bringing their kids here and it being a nice environment, like a nice, safe environment yeah. where I'm not too pushy with the kids, they're only pushing themselves. And like, you can see what they do once you get a nice group of kids together, they can. They can do the jumps, and yeah. uh, I think Supercross does need to get bigger because we had it for so long with the Arena Cross and Matt Bates yeah. doing such a good job with with that and having all the classes stack up. I know we got rid of the fifty class in yeah. the end, but like you, you got to have the fifties, you got to have the sixty fives, you got to have the eighty five, you got to do totally. That. But what obviously and for Matt, what he did was amazing. Obviously in the off season again, trying to fit it round. But so then you know, but again, it was to take it to the stadiums and whatever. It made mm -hmm. it a little bit more expensive. But we can, you know, there's a, there's room for a scene in the UK to do right. it outdoors Massively. in the summer school holidays to get kids more into to, it. To, I reckon three or four, but not, like you've got three or, three or four tracks where you can go to. You've got this one, you can maybe build another one somewhere else. Just experiment with yeah. it a little bit. And you can bring new people, like tell people the local towns yeah. come out. They've got, we've got eight-year-olds to pros and people are going to come watch that. And that's the other thing with a Supercross track. Of course, you don't need so much space. Yeah, no, for you sure. know, literally, you can ask for a small corner of a farmer's field rather than having to need it all. Yeah, and people are going to say Supercross is, is this, this and that, but the people that say that are only saying that because they haven't got the technique or, t or they haven't got the mindset to, yeah. to actually slow down and, and try to hit a set of whoops or, or do anything like that. Yeah. You know? it's, it's a difficult You've got to start somewhere, haven't we? That's Everyone's got to start somewhere. And, and that's, think... my, that's always been my argument with it. It's like, listen, they, they had to start somewhere with, it, with, Amer with America, with American Supercross. You know, when they first took motocross into a stadium in 1971 or 72, whatever it was, that changed the entire environment of American motocross. Yeah. And it did. Hmm. All of a sudden, you know, more people switched on to motocross because they come to watch a Supercross and your entry level to Supercross really is getting a dirt bike and going and riding a motocross track to learn the basic skills oh, for sure. before you do that. So it's, you know. But it's an, uh, to be fair, Supercross for me is a no brainer because one, it's another skill on the motocross bike. It's only yeah. going to make you faster on the mo motocross track. Two, the parents can come and have a nice evening and, and watch their kids do well and, and sponsors. It, yeah. This, the world nowadays is about vlogs. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. sponsors, media, you know as well as I know. Like, yeah, easier to watch, bikes are cleaner. Sponsors all are going to love that if they can put their bike on a bit of TV coverage on a little tiny track where they can see the track and you have actually got time to read Steel Hawk Motocross or, or whatever yeah. the sponsor is on the side of the bike and get a little shout out on the start line because that's how Supercross yeah. works. Yeah. And I'm, I'm all for helping the kids out. Like, I'm, you told mm. me about this, I told you, yeah, yeah. didn't even care where it was. I, I'm I'm all for helping the kids out and trying to get them because as soon as I come out of this Supercross rut, yeah, there ain't much. There's maybe little John is the only guy I know that's got a little Supercross track, but there's no one really like the Brunels and the Chatfields. They've got nippers now. Mm. I don't think they're going to be riding Supercross for much longer. And after that, there's going to be a little period of me doing it from England, and then there's just it's just a sheer yeah. drop. There we are. We've got to follow your lead, man. We've got to follow your no, lead. No, it's not. It's the follow your lead. Everyone's, no, got, their, you, I everyone's know. got their own path in their own way. Like, it's like I said, everyone's got their own roller coaster. But some people enjoy that aspect of doing the Supercross and some people love the motocross. But I think if you can mould them both together and people not get scared of the... Because you, mate, we've seen it enough. People get hurt in, in the paddock. Let alone on the, <laughs> yeah. let alone yeah. on the do, track. They? They, like, do. Uh, they do. You can you can take so much from Supercross and learn so many skills that we have. But to like learn. you said, if you're starting from the beginning and you're learning the basic skill set to make you safer, yeah, 
less chance of being intimidated exactly. by it, isn't it? Exactly. So that's what we're trying to do, uh, and fair, fair play to you. Doing. Now, though, Dil, we've got to deal with the shitty English traffic. So as much as we can big up Supercross and try and get things going, what we can't change no, the is English the road traffic. network in the UK. Yeah. Good luck with that M25. Yeah, no. Thanks for today. It's been great, and uh, hopefully we can do more of them. I'm sure we will. Cheers, there you mate. go. Dylan Woodcock, my old pal. Uh, get behind him, not just anything. Follow him on all his vlogs, whether because they're cool anyway. And of course, let's get behind him. Hopefully, he'll be lining up at A1 next year on a team. That's the plan. If That's not, what we need. I'll be on the uh, east coast, west coast. I'll be on one of the coasts. Yeah. I'll be there. I'm, even if I have to buy a bike, I'll be there. Good. All right, going at the road. Thank you very much. There you go. That's Dylan Woodcock. We're done. Another man in the van. We'll catch up with you again soon. See you later.